Most of us are tired of these lies and all this nonsense <clears throat> and all this crap that we get inundated with by the media and the trolls who feed the dissension. Yeah, a lot of us are done. That's why so many people have checked out. They don't pay attention to any of this anymore. They, they hate politics. They hate politicians. They think everyone and everything is corrupt. They're not wrong. A lot, a lot of that is correct. There is a lot of corruption. A lot. Way too much. There's corruption on both sides of the aisle. Now, admittedly, the GOP is much more corrupt than the Democratic Party. Yeah. And I'm not really a Democrat. I'm further left than that. Now, most of the people in the country want progressive initiatives most of the people in the country want sensible gun regulations and, and, and make it so that, you know, uh, assault weapons are banned again. Yeah, they need to be banned again. Now, the amount of shootings that happened with assault weapons for that 10-year ban was drastically less than it is today. You know, the fact that a knucklehead can go and buy an AR-15 type rifle or an AK-47 type assault rifle is disgusting and it's wrong and it shouldn't be happening that doesn't mean there aren't responsible people who can own these and, and never use them for nefarious purposes no it doesn't mean that however you've got 70 percent of the guns situated in what is it three percent of the population okay that means there's a lot of collectors there's a lot of people who collect firearms and they don't, they don't even use most of them. They just have them in their collection, like, you know, like people collect toys or other items. There is a lot of that, and I'm not, I'm, I'm not opposed to that. Uh, I'm not opposed to, to having firearms. Although I don't think, and when you really look at the history of the Second Amendment, the Second Amendment isn't so you could have a gun. It doesn't give you the right to bear personal arms. No, no, it's about having firearms as a part of a well-regulated militia. And when that came into being, all there was was flintlock-type rifles. There wasn't the type of weapons we have today. The assault weapons we have today are people killers, whether they're fully automatic or semi-automatic. And it is fairly easy, if you know somebody who knows how to work on firearms, to change a semi-automatic uh, assault weapon to a fully automatic assault weapon. It's fairly easy. At any rate, most people want sensible gun regulation. And I don't care if you buy a shotgun, a 410 shotgun, to go out and, and you know, just shoot uh, skeet with, or even go dove or, or some type of bird hunting. I don't care. Uh, that I think that's okay. The problem is, is everyone who owns these weapons should have to take a safety course. And gun safety, which includes safe storage and handling of the weapons, period. That's enough about that. Most people want women to have control over their bodies, have a right to abortion and contraception. Right. Now, there's a lot of idiocy that's involved in this whole question. And the people who, who are calling themselves pro-life, they don't understand human developmental biology at all. They think that when the gametes, that is the sperm and the egg meet and create a zygote, in other words, a, 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 a two-cell bundle that later becomes a multicellular bundle and months later turns into a fetus and after that a baby, they think that a baby is formed at conception. That's bullshit. Those cells are alive, right. They were alive before they became a gamete. I mean, before they became a zygote, they were alive. Okay, just like when you when you scrape cells out of your out of your uh, inside of your cheek and your mouth, those cells are alive until they're exposed to the elements and they die. Just like the zygote would be as well. Just like sperm and egg cells will die the same way. The other problem here is that these people don't even know what their Bible says about this. They're trying to tell us that. Uh, their 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 life agenda involves some kind of scripture. No, it doesn't. 
In fact, if you go, the really the only references of any importance here go back to the uh, the Hebrew Bible. I don't know the exact track. I don't like, you know, quoting the Bible like it was some kind of potent document. It's not. You know, it, there are potent statements in there and, and nice stories in there and some great myths in there. Yeah, it's true, but I just don't like them. I don't, it's not my flavor. At any rate, it, it says that life begins with breath. So that means if we bring it to our context with birth. Now, I'm not in favor of aborting fetuses that are over three months, you know, over three months old, unless they're defective, unless they're going to, it's they're going to pump out a, a, you know, a dead baby, or it's going to pump out some, a, a baby that has no head or no organs or whatever. <clears throat> no, if, if the mother and the doctor decide they want to abort that fetus, they should be able to without any hassle from the fucking government. The government needs to get its nose out of this, and these Republicans, they need to be called on this with the facts on a daily basis, on a regular basis. They need to be called on this because they're liars, and they don't really understand. All they're doing is trying to exercise control and grab power, and the majority of people don't want their agenda. I'm sure that if you poll people on the debt ceiling, they're going to tell you they want it to be raised. Yeah, I'm sure if you poll people now, we do know that loan forgiveness is a big deal. And for me, what I think is all consumer loans should be completely expunged and forgiven. That's right. You want to stimulate the economy? Hey, <laughs> that'll really stimulate it. It might cause a couple of uh, credit, uh, you know, credit sources to go out of business, which would be good. It might kill a couple of these uh, uh, credit card um, uh, organizations. That would be good. You know, credit is just way, way out of line. It's way out of line. We don't need all this credit, you know, and all it does is put people in debt, and then they become burdened by this debt. It's bad enough to have a mortgage that's ridiculous. And as most of us know, the price of housing is vastly inflated, vastly inflated. So this brings us to a major philosophical premise in a sense. Not, not really. I'm not a philosopher nor do I think I am. We need to have discourse, more open discourse. Unfortunately, it has to be on like a third grade level, so most, almost everybody can understand it. And that's going to bore people who have a greater, a greater knowledge and understanding. It's going to bore them. However, we need to reach everyone. And we need to come up with a lot of common sense here. Now, the, uh, the penchant, that probably, what, about 30, 40% of the population have with the great man, with authoritarianism, with a di wanting a dictator. And this is what your, your old buddy, the orange pus bag, wants to be. He wants to be a dictator, like his buddies, like Orban and like what's Kim Jong-un and like Putin and, you know, leaders like that. He wants, he wants to have that kind of power. He wants to be able to... Uh, Tell the press, you, you don't have freedom of press. He wants to be able to uh, silence uh, protesters that are contrary to what he and his agenda are. His agenda is not about benefiting the vast majority of our citizens. No, 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 no. Now, the other thing uh, that they, you know, they key in on immigration, <clears throat> you know, illegal immigration. You know what? Most people that came here did not come here legally. Most people that came here, came here. So in that sense, a lot of people who came here in the last 150 years or 200 years came here illegally, if you want to look at present day. However, back then it was, hey, yeah, come on, come on. You know, let's, let's fulfill manifest destiny. Here's the deal. Birth rates have dropped. People don't want to have kids like they used to. Okay, our, our uh, Latino population is growing in leaps and bounds. And you know what? These are very, they're a very productive segment of our society. They're more upwardly mobile than white people and black people. That's right. They have a lot of ambition. Uh, a lot of them have come from countries where they don't have uh, upward mobility and they don't have opportunity. And we want people like that here, don't we? Do we care what color their skin is or what their native language was or what their religious customs are? No. 
Not on a consumer basis, we don't care. We want them to enter the economy, enrich it, and, and make it a bigger, wider choice of products and services. Okay, I'm not in agreement with all of that. I'm not, no, I don't think growth is the answer. I think growth, growth is what's destroying our planet. Yeah, uh, that is, you know, unhinged growth, uh, unsustainable growth. That, that's what destroying the planet. And that leads me to the next part here, which is that upward mobility has sunk. It's not what it used to be for all of us. That's right. The chances of a person that comes from poverty to become a person in the upper 20%, let's forget about the 1%, because that means 1% are going to make it or less. I think it's way, it's a very small percentage of people that can become multimillionaires and billionaires. Very small percentage. Yet everybody wants that. Of course, we all want to have millions and never have to worry about our financial security. Of course we do. Well, it's not going to happen because a lot of that comes from burdens on the backs of other people. So what we need, we need a system that guarantees upward mobility, that people can enter that upper 20% to change it into the 40 and 50% to make sure that the middle class is not static or sinking, that it's growing. We need those people at the poverty level to at least be in the middle class, right? Am I right? Do, do you agree with that? I think most people would. Why? Well, the logic of that is that when we have those people and they have disposable income and they're spending money on essential goods and services as well, that it enriches the economy. And then we don't need to worry about debt ceilings and debt and all that other nonsense that's been created to scare the hell out of people. We're tired of this. We're tired of this BS. Now, a lot of us know everything I've just said, maybe in greater detail, and you know, with with, with a greater uh, with a greater stream of rhetoric, yeah, yeah, yeah. There are people that know more of, about this than I do. That's for sure. That's where I get my information. I read a lot. I, that's right. I still read. Do you read? How many books now? Uh, one thing that I have read, uh, looking at statistics, is a lot of people still read. Well, I wonder what they're reading though. Are they are they reading facts and figures? Probably not so much as they are fiction or whatever. And that's it's all good. It's all good. It's great. It's great for writers. You know, if you're buying and reading, you know, fiction or nonfiction literature, that's great for writers. <clears throat> Here's the problem. What people are reading does not translate into a, much logic. A lot of people have checked out. And these are the people that can make the changes that the majority of us who have been polled on this crap want. We want these changes. When people check out and they do it on the, well, I hate politics. Well, you know, you can't escape politics. I'm sorry. You can't escape it. It's shaping your life. It's going to, it's controlling a lot of your life. No, stop that shit. Get engaged. Go out there. Make wise choices in voting. Let's get people who are dedicated to be trusted servants and not grifters. And let's say this, majority of these people are grifters. State and local level is very important uh, to, to have a voice. And, you know, in most cities, you can have a voice at your city council. In many cities, you can do that. And that makes for a better city. People are too worried about all the spending and all this. And that's because the Republicans are telling you, oh, the spending is out of control and it's going to ruin us. No, it doesn't. When people spend, when the government in, has injected this money uh, into the general population, it has enhanced the economy. I mean, you know, I'm not a big guy on the unemployment figures and all that kind of stuff, but we're at about 3.5% unemployment. That's the lowest since, what is it, 1950? Come on. Come on, wake up. You know, those of you who, who are just, oh, everything is so bad and we're divided. And finally, my last topic, division in the country. It's always been there. You've had ethnic populations that moved to various regions. I'm reading a fascinating book about this. Fascinating book. And it's about these populations that immigrated here and the regions that they're in, like the... the uh, the New England region and the Mid-Atlantic region and the South and all these. That's not what they call these, the academics. These divisions have always been there. 
the people, there's a lot of people who came here from uh, the British Isles, meaning Ireland, Scotland, England, you what we call the UK now, that were fiercely independent uh, and uh, didn't want anybody to suppress their freedoms because they were under the boot of uh, English rule. They were under that boot. So they come here and they want they don't want anybody to mess with them. They don't want anybody to tell them anything about what they need to do, which in a lot of cases means they have a vastly uncooperative society. And, you know, look at Appalachia, for instance. You know, not a, you know, not there. There is there are people in Appalachia who are not like that. There, there's no question about it. However, these divisions that everybody's going nuts over now have always been there. They've always been there. This, uh, you know, the funny thing is, is all this reactionary crap that you see on the forefront of the GOP these days. It's always been there. Look at it. If you look back in your history uh, to the New Deal and how those idiots fought tooth and nail to prevent Medicare, to stop the great work programs that FDR created. You know, FDR was our greatest modern president. There's no, no question about it. Yes, he did some things that were wrong and bad. Of course he did. Yes, there was uh, some racism that was perpetuated uh, in his in, in his programs and and agendas uh, underlying. They've been they've been there forever. These reactionaries have been there forever, and they're not going to go away. We have to come up. We have to step up. And I'm not talking about I'm a uh, I'm talking about the issues. We have to step up with the issues, and we have to get. We have to get trusted servants. doesn't matter what part of they are, as long as they're trusted servants who are not grifters, who are not trying to, to make our economy static, who are not trying to make uh, the assimilation of other cultures and ethnicities into our, in, into our plurality as a whole. You see, we're never going to have this American culture. We, we have American uh, society. Uh, it's composed of a lot of different components, and a lot of that probably comes from those ethnic areas that were involved in the founding of the country. A lot of it does. It's always been there. So don't give me this divisive, oh, no, there's more people, and there's more people expressing themselves than ever because a lot of social media, a lot of that has to do with social media, and a lot of people have checked out. Too many people have checked out. Don't check out. Check in. Check in. Let's get it done. I don't care about the party affiliation and all that. It's not about. It's not about that. It's about the issues. If you're interested in in having affordable housing for everyone, and yeah, there's going to be people that make a lot of money. They're going to want to buy multi million dollar homes. Yes, of course. Okay, so they got the money. Okay, let them do it. People need housing. They need a place to live where they have a roof over their head and they have that type of security. We need, we need better expanded health care that's covered in, in our, in our, you know, from our paycheck taxes. We need that. Okay, so it's going to cost more. Well, a lot less people are going to get sick and die. Uh, there's going to be a, a lot better uh, mental uh, disorder working. Yeah, there's going to be a lot more therapeutics for mental disorders depression and schizophrenia and uh, uh, bipolar and all, and all the different mental disorders that there are. Addiction is a mental disorder. You know, it's a behavioral mental disorder. A lot more for that. We have to be sensible and logical about it. And do we have to inject that with as much compassion as love and love as possible. There's just people that are just not never going to be that way. But, you know, I'm sorry to tell you. I'm sorry to burst your, uh, your, your bubble, your unconditional love bubble. But there's a lot of people that aren't going to be that way. Let, 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 let's just let's just realize that. However, we do need to include them and give them the opportunity. It's just like that orange pus bag had an opportunity to go to the uh, the civil suit trial uh, that the that the gal won. Uh, you know, five million damages. Great, five million. I wish it was five hundred million. You know, from all the women and everybody that he screwed over. Um, that, that goes to show you, though, the guy didn't show up for the trial. And now he's going to say that he wasn't given a fair trial because he had no opportunity. When the judge actually extended the time for him to come in and give his side of the story. 
He wasn't willing to do it. And he and if you go for this guy, please examine why. Well, he didn't do good stuff for the country, really. Not much. The tax cut was bad for most of us. Yeah. And what did it do? It, it made us spend trillions of dollars we didn't need to spend. Right. Right. So let's not. Come on. Come on. And and he they raised the debt ceiling under him. What was it? Three times or something? Two or three times? Come on. This guy is a fraud. He's a ho. He's everything that he projects on everybody else. And don't don't pay attention to him. He, he, he basically is not worth your attention. There are not enough expletives to accurately describe the corruption, the deception, the lies, and everything else that this jerk purports.